Okay, let's go ahead and begin. So what we're gonna do is just very briefly, everyone can see my screen. You should see on one side, a, a, a form, Google form, and then the other side, you should see Facebook page. Obviously our workshops are free. There is a, there's no payment required. The only thing I ask is that for those who attend, I will post this form after the session. So sometime later in the day or tomorrow, I just ask that you fill out the form and there's different options here. This is a, this is a form and also an assignment. So if you wanted to, to have this workshop be credited towards a certificate that you, we want to enroll later, or you want to enroll in, you just would need to fill out the questions. So there's some investigation questions here. There'll be some reflection questions. And then there's also going to be a, a, a project assignment. You do not have to do that. Okay. What I am asking is that you fill out the form and at the minimum, you would come down here and you would just, I just ask that you fill out whether you want to, whether you attended, whether you are going to complete the questions or whether you're going to, to also do the application project. Okay. Again, zero pressure. There's no pressure, but I want, I, we need a record of all those who attend because this, this is, not free, right? So, so, so we have partners in the U.S. that are supporting the school. They're supporting this type of training because they they see the value of it, not just in your equipping, but but more importantly, the proclamation of the gospel in the Philippines globally, and also the growth of the church. So, we want to have a record of this to share with them, so that they can see how their funds are impacting our our work and 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 the gospel. So, I just ask that you fill this out. At the minimum, it's like five questions, including the, the 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 type of enrollment. And again, you can just enroll as attendee. If you just want to fill out the, the questions for the certificate level, or if you want to actually enroll in the master's level where you'll be preaching or teaching this. Okay. And and for those who are are doing that that master's level, we can we can discuss more after. Okay. But I'll just leave that there for you. And so next, uh we have on my on my on my left, we have the Facebook page, and let me just introduce you to the Facebook um, group. So, and so, for those who 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 are not as familiar with our school, we have we have our Facebook uh, page for the Cloud Theological Institute, and right now we post everything here. And there's different groups that we can join classes. The classes aren't running right now, so we'll we'll have to get them back up and running. You can join the classes to get the existing content, but they're not they're we're not um, teaching right now. So Christology, interpreting Ephesians, there's content there, but we're not teaching right now. But but the benefit right now is we'll be posting here our videos. You can see our videos, our workshops. Our project right now that I would really encourage you if it interests you is we're working through the Westminster Shorter Catechism. And so we have here posted these handouts, if you can see here, and these are printable. So they're, they're graphical bullet point uh, handouts that you can print out. And the desire for these is this is giving you the most important and just concise content for the Westminster Shorter Catechism. And the Shorter Catechism is really designed to give us the most fundamental truths of Christian theology, what we ought to believe and what duty is required of us. And so I am learning the catechism myself. I'm teaching up my children. And so we really want to encourage you to do, to do the same. And the point here is that a lot of people will say, oh, theology is so deep, you know, or it's just theology. It's not from the word of God. These pages really unpack how the catechism does in fact stand on the word of God. And you can see the, the relationships there. And so it's incredibly beneficial. So no pressure there, but if you want to, to, to use that, um, please avail yourself. The, the the next thing that I want to sh to share with you is so related to the to the catechism we uh, are doing videos so if I, if you go to YouTube I'm gonna pause this here so this is a is a one hour video that works through the the Westminster Shorter Catechism question one so we unpack the we unpack and and structurally analyze the catechism. And then we go into the actual proof text and show how the proof texts are so close or undergird the catechism statement. And so here we are investigating First Corinthians, uh, we're investigating Romans eleven thirty six and how it relates to 
the the catechism because the catechism means nothing if it's not scriptural okay anyway so so that's how that works so if you go to confessing the word channel all of all of these videos are going to be related to um, the historic creeds confessions and catechism so we'll be doing the apostles creed eventually we'll do the athanasian creed we'll do a lot of different historic creeds so it's more than just the westminster standards but we are starting with the westminster standards and we're starting with the westminster shorter catechism because agree or disagree it's the most fundamental catechism most historic uh in the history of the church and the, and the most used would we'll just encourage you there with that um coming back here then to facebook for this workshop if you want to get the content so we have handouts we have printouts we'll be posting more things you'd want to go to our other page interpreting the word interpreting the word is our interpretative method this is a different page on on facebook and then we have a group that's connected there so coming down here we should have the group post somewhere oh man i'm gonna have to post the group so i'll find i'll find i'm gonna add a post to the group later uh later today but here the you can search this interpreting the word study group so if you're not a member join this study group request to join and I have all the content related to this workshop here. So we have a, dis a, a brief discussion from Wick Warren on why he believes in female elders. We have the worksheet here. So if I come up here, worksheet. Um, where is this worksheet? At? Here we go. Markup worksheet. So if you look here, I just, I just tapped on it. And so I just downloaded it. And then if I go interpreting the word, so this is the worksheet. It's PDF, so everyone can see that. And so this allows you, um, if you weren't able to access this, that's fine. You can do it later. But in the future, our workshops, I want you to follow our method. So we have one page here, so you can mark up looking at the structure. And then down here is a note sheet, so you can make notes from each phrase. And this is really to set you up to prepare a exegetical theological, and then finally, or if you just want to prepare a homiletical, a homiletical outline to teach or preach or to conduct a small group. So, so these are designed so you can follow along with the videos. So we're, we're trying to set up the website so that you can just download these, you can watch the videos, you can participate in the workshops, and, and these are the way you would take notes. Now, of course, you can bring your notebook and take additional notes a hundred percent. But for me, when I'm working through the text, I, I, I'm trying to do all my work here where the text is centered and I'm all my comments should be related to the text. So if you're making comments, maybe this is practical. If you're making comments, you're preparing outlines and it's not related to the text, maybe this is going to push you back. <laughs> this will push you back a little bit to be like, okay, I need to be in the text um, because how does it relate to this text? You know what I'm saying? So like we'll, we'll have the text we're studying to preach or teach, and then we go off on tangents. We want to always bring it back to what the word of God is saying, because there are no power in your words if you are not, if you're not standing on the word of God. If if it's your opinion, it will not stand. If it's your, if it's your thoughts, it will not be remembered. It has to be, it has to come from the word of God. And the and the spirit will use that to work in the hearts of those who are listening. There's other content here besides that. When we're finished. I will also post in here the, the my own notes that are printable, okay? So that's one of the benefits of being a part of the study group. You're going to get all that content. Sir, Tim, can we also have an interaction on that page? Yes, yes, 100%. So, so I, I ask your question, make a comment in the different posts, 100%. It's not just for sharing information. The only thing I request is that the group, if you want to post, you can post and create your own thread, or you can make comments and interact with each other. A hundred percent. The only thing I ask is that it has to be related to that specific topic. So you could post another verse that has that that is not second or first Timothy, but it has to be related to the topic at hand. Does that make sense? So so. I don't want a, just a general, I, I, because otherwise it's going to be so full. So feel free to post. Feel even even if you want to share a song or some other thing that's related, a hundred percent. And um, the other thing I want to say is, do not do not feel ashamed if your if your position is different than mine. For those of you who know me, I'm very relaxed. I will 
always give you my opinion, but if you disagree, if you disagree, you know, we're Presbyterians, we have Baptists, we have, I'm sure there's maybe a few Pentecostal, or maybe you're still Pentecostal. If you disagree with me, feel free to post. I won't really, unless people are like, Tim, you know, what's your opinion here? You know, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you debate, just be respectful, but you know, I'm relaxed. So, you know, my desire is not to make everyone just like me. My desire is to to speak the truth. And if you come closer or if we disagree or if we're respectful, as long we're studying the word of God. So that's really my, my desire. So Mark, feel free to post, feel free to add. Just, I ask that it's related and that it's gracious to each other. So great question, comment. Anyone else want to add? I, I heard some other comments or questions. Hey, Tim, this is really exciting, man. Man, I, I, I can't tell you how excited I am about this. Um, I don't know why I missed it for a long time. I, I just got really busy. Yeah, I just got really busy. L- life, then, l- life happens, Glenn. I know, I know. Just, just life just took over. But now I'm right on, back on track, back on ministry, back on pastoral ministry. Right. And this is really something that I need right now. Like yeah. this is a need for me right now. Yeah. Exactly. And so I'm very interested on that certificate course, even okay. maybe for the master of course. Okay. Please, please help us um, yeah. with me as my pastor in training. Also, I'm sure he'd uh, also be very interested uh, yeah. about that course. Thank you, Tim. You're welcome. So after this session, we'll set up a time for those that are interested for us to to to, to um, get together. All of us have struggled with, including myself, because we all have other work. You know, I have other responsibilities. Everyone has other responsibilities. So um, one of the struggles that we have had is that all of us have, we, you know, we have, we, our eyes are bigger than our mouths can eat. So, so we, we, our plan is to go very slow. We're going to do, we're all for one course this fall, Doctrine of the Word of God. And so for those who are interested, again, you can take attendance, you can do certificate. The master's is hairy in that, I have one school in the U.S. that will take our courses for credit. We're still being incorporated, so we're not able to offer an accredited master's course. What we're offering is a master's level with the hope that one day it could become accredited at the U.S. So there's no guarantees with that. So, you know, I would just encourage all of us to commit to something that you can do. And then we can build from that. And the benefit of what we're doing is that you can come back and instead of retaking the course, if you're like, oh, I took it for attendance. Now I want to take it for credit. You don't have to rewatch everything. You just have to fulfill the assignments because everything's going to be posted online. So anyway, we can, we can, um, for those who are interested after this session, we can stay and we can, we can set up a time for us to discuss specifics. Um, Great comment and question, Glenn. Anyone else want to make a comment or or, or ask a question? Okay, it's already 726. I did not hear anything else. We need to get into the Word of God. So if you have your Bibles, please turn in your Bibles to 1 Timothy 2, 12 to 14. And I'm also going to put it up here on the screen here. So I hope that everyone can see this. Can everyone see this here? Now, with the way that I... The, the way I'm sharing, I can no longer see your faces, which is fine. So I, I need an uh, an audible response. So, so let's go ahead. Let's read the word of God. And then we're going to, we're going to study. So hear now the word of the Lord, 1 Timothy 2, 12 to 14. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. So strong, diba, so malakas. All right, so everyone can see see this now. So what we're going to do here is, um, before we get into the text, I just want to do a very brief, and this is a time for discussion here. I can't see you, so you're going to have to just speak up and take turns. Let's do a quick... Um, let's do a quick breakout session. Let me just... Let's just talk about... For those of you who are familiar with the the issue of complementarianism uh, versus egalitarianism, so so let's let's just do a brief uh, discussion here. What has been said? What are the issues? Um, maybe for those of you who are familiar with the the Southern Baptist controversy. What happened with Rick Warren? Let's just talk for a moment about this. 
Uh, Tim, I'm I'm a Southern Baptist pastor. Can I? Yeah, go ahead, go on. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course, I for one, I'm very happy. Finally, our counterparts in the U.S. made a stand on the Word of God. Very courageous. Not an easy, uh, not an easy decision to make, especially uh, over there, uh, in your part of the world. We are a we are in Central Luzon. We are 35 local churches, and we're all uh, for uh, complementarianism. Okay, and it's challenging. It's challenging because uh, you you live there in the Philippines. You know that. Yeah, I mean, in majority, uh, evangelical churches here in the Philippines are very egalitarian. Yeah, um, there are millions, thousands of women pastors. Okay, and, so, so yeah. No, that's great. So, so let's go down, down to here. Let's, so let's define the issue. So, um, past pastor Glenn brought up the point of, um, uh, pastoras. We'll just put pastoras here. So let's just briefly define the issue. So, um, someone else, what, what, what are the two definitions briefly between complementarianism and egalitarianism? Um, if I were to take a shot at it, uh, complementarianism means, um, Men and women have respective roles that complement one another. That's why it's called complementarianism. It's also the position where we hold that only men can hold the office of the pastor or the elder or the bishop or anything similar, uh, because it was mentioned by God as the order of authority that we should have. And that even has a rooting in the creation story in Genesis. Okay. Egalitarian egalitarianism on the other hand i forgot the greek that they use for the etymology of that word but it has to yeah. do with i guess equal or something like that it's the position where men and women can have similar roles it doesn't matter what kind of role you operate in because it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman that's what they say uh it's also the position where since of course men and women are supposed to be equal and when it comes to everything uh women could also be pastors this is not to be confused with a general term egalitarian when we're talking about other stuff because i guess in principle um, equality among other things is okay but not in this one where god said there's a restriction yeah no that's really good so di differences removed when it comes to roles okay Excellent. No, that's a great summary, Julian, of both. And um, uh, anyone else want to add? So um, roles and and functions. Let's do roles and functions. Anyone else want to add to that? Or you can ask a question. And just an uh, uh, overall view, uh, looking back in the scriptures, in the uh, New Testament, there are, or even the Old Testament, there are no... Uh, mention of uh, women uh, uh, apostles or women uh, prophets, except for the old uh, Anna, the the one in the she's in the temple. Yeah, but that's my my observation only. Right? There are exceptions, but the the norm in scripture is male leadership, right? So let's add that. So Danny added the comment that the in this issue uh, typically. Typically, in Scripture, there is um, male male leadership. Okay, there are exceptions. We have exceptions in Judges. the The prophetic role. So we could not say dogmatically every single instance, but typically. So we we could say typically. Okay. And so we want to, we, we, yeah, go ahead. Only for uh, the apostles, the, uh, the 12 apostles are all male. Yeah. So, so we have um, prophets. We've got, we also have apostles. We have um, priests and kings, Diba, priests and kings. And there's others we could add. There's also elders. There's elders in Israel. Uh, elders that that led with Moses, elders and judges, right? But 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 when it comes to the judges, it's not black and white. Okay, so we have to we have to address that. 
All right. Um, I don't know if this is in line with the topic, but how about Junia as an apostle? Some others say that she is an apostle in Romans, uh, in Romans 30 verse 7. So let's put debated. Let's put debated here, okay? And we can investigate that because it's in Romans and Paul wrote Romans, right? So it is interesting if this verse, so, so, so Paul wrote Romans and Paul wrote uh, Timothy. So how does that influence, you know, let's, let's think about that. Okay. But no, great observation. A anyone else want to add or make an additional comment before we get into the text? I would like to add that there were arguments also that were raised as well regarding gifts of teaching in favor of egalitarian in some way. If you are gifted and able to teach, so why not uh, use it for uh, pastoral ministry? No, great, great comment. So giftedness and ableness should, should point towards use of gifts. All right. So anyone else want to add? There's maybe one more thing I want to say, but any, anyone else want to add? So a uh, very debated issue. There there does seem to be looking at the comprehensive scope of scripture. It's not black and white in the sense that there isn't any issues. Does that make sense? So we don't want to make a statement, wh whether you're for or against, that it's that it's black and that's it's a black and white from the standpoint that there are no, there are no, there are no th uh, issues that we have to address. It, it is black and white, and I would say, in the sense that the scripture is clear, but but it, it, it it's not to say that there isn't a, a, any issue. And so the specific example that we have to address, for example, is Deborah, right? Deborah is a judge. She's in leadership at the time the judges were over Israel. Anyone else want to add or make a comment here? I think uh, the change in culture, that's one of the reasons that some egalitarians use. Yes, change in culture. So, no, that's great. So change in culture, and I'm going to add to this. So change in culture, and then they would also claim a, a uh, the trajectory of, of Scripture. Has anyone heard of that before? The trajectory of Scripture. Has anyone heard of that? First time. Yeah, so the trajectory of Scripture, they would say, is that the the direction of Scripture is towards egalitarianism. So, for example, there was um, forms of servitude and slavery in Scripture, but the, tra the trajectory was moving beyond slavery. So Paul does not demand that all relationships are abolished in the, in the slavery master-servant relationship. But the trajectory of, of, of Scripture was moving towards that direction of ending of, of servitude or slavery. They would use that as an example, and then they would say th th this would also apply. So they would say, don't you agree with the, the, the slavery issue? And, and then if this is the case, then we should also apply this to, to gender, okay? Um, that's actually a stronger argument. I don't agree with it, but you know that that is a that is a um a stronger argument although i would we we just can't go into it maybe we could do another workshop and discuss it i would say is how do you how do you define slavery and i would argue strongly against the slavery of of the slave trade around the world in africa in in um parts of the middle east in in asia and and, and then in the Phil and then in america for sure um in england in the colonial era, that slavery was quite different than the slavery in during Bible times. Although there was similar slavery type things that went on in the Bible times, so so I'm not saying that the, the slavery wasn't always like that, but I am to say that the the, the slavery in 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 uh, the Roman times were somewhat different. All right. Any other comments? I think we're going to call it there. Let's go ahead. Um, Pastor Tim. Final call. Go ahead. Uh, final call. Go ahead. At the, at, at the Vince commented something. In the go chat. ahead. Go, can you read that for us? Yeah. I don't know, Pastor Tim. I just wrote here. What if there are situations or a certain point in time where there is no man capable and it's yes. predominantly women? 
So how how do how do a church manage that? No, no, that is a great question. And maybe you'd be surprised at my answer on that. So uh, no men are, are capable. So how do we how do we approach that? And so this is why this is why maybe it's not going to be as black and white. Um, you know, I'm not going to say anything else. Let, let's get into the text. And then so this is this, these are, this is contextual. OK. And so we want to be thinking about that as well. Great, great comment. Excellent comment. Okay. Last call. Anyone else? Last call. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the risk here of being misinterpreted, man, but the, the no man capable, that's, that's the greatest excuse. That's the greatest cop out. That's, that's what I tell my elders, you know, it's a cop out. <laughs> well, so, so, so Glenn, I will, I will push back and, and I'm, I'm not giving, I'm not showing my cards yet. I'm not showing my cards. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to share a, a, a context. So my background is fundamental Baptist. So fundamental Baptist, very conservative, more conservative than, than the SBC. And in China, there was a period of time, not so much now, but there was a period of time where all the capable men or most of them were, were, were in, were in prison. And so there was um, the fundamental Baptist had made the decision that, that, for training and equipping, they would they would pursue both men and women because of the shortage of, of of Christian believers. Now I don't know the full context there. I'm just saying a, a situation where I could foresee this. Now I agree with you. In other contexts, it's definitely a, a, a cop out. Okay, so um, <laughs> I'm not showing my cards. I'm just telling you how other fundamental Baptists had handled it in in a uh, religious persecution scenario. So. Maybe we want to caveat this, um, like a religious uh, per persecuting state, at least contextually. I am not giving you my 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 uh, answer yet, but um, I think that that that's a that that's a that's a good comment, Glenn. And um, I forgot the person who mentioned that 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 context. So, religious persecuting uh, state. Um, but that's very specific and it's very time-based and we can come back to that. So let's, let's do this. Let's put a hold. Can, can, can yeah, I add ahead. one comment? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Just yeah. to, just to make sure I, I am not uh, out of context. Yeah. Uh, in cases like this, where there are many denominations with different interpretations of the Bible, yeah. Yeah. is there a group or an institution that determines which one is correct or which one should be followed? Like what happened to SBC? So it, it really comes down to the level of authority or structure. So SBC is a, is a confederation of independent churches. Okay. So all they can do is the churches that are in fellowship in partnership with us have to abide by our bylaws and our constitution. Okay. Um, but, but there's no further action that they could take. So that's why with Rick Warren's church, there was no, disciplinary action and, and and i'll and i'll i'll share that what once we get once we finish the text we'll come back and dis discuss the context contextual issues but so all they could do is remove them they couldn't discipline them they couldn't take any further action in other denominations methodist in presbyterian in some pentecostal like assemblies of god they can take further action because there's actual structure and hierarchy anglican episcopalian so then they can take action. So it's really limited, Pat Kuya Bull Boy, to the to the level of authority. So in Baptist context, that's the local church. All right, let's get in the text. Let's 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 put a pause here. And I hope that everyone is 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 holding their their beliefs firmly and loosely, you know, in one sense, because the word of God will will speak to us. Okay, so let's what we're gonna do next is let's do a, a structural analysis of this. And so we have here, what I'll do is I'll just talk through this. We actually have all these relationships on our website. I should have shared it. I didn't share it. And I apologize if you want to look at that. I can share that on the break so that you, we can follow along. So what we have here is we have a, a, an action word here. And it's negative. So the action word is um, do not permit. The, the actor is Paul. And we're going to want to really identify who is Paul, because that deals with the, the, the level 
the level of of this action the 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 extent of his position is going to influence that okay whether paul is giving a recommendation or he's giving a command that has to be obeyed okay extent of authority we have to we have to consider that okay and then we have we have a object so this is an object person and this is this is going to be a this will be a plug for why we need to know greek okay now does everyone notice what versions are you reading esv okay so we got esv, ESV. readers ESV, any other any other versions besides ESV that we're reading? I, I use Legacy Standard Bible. Yes. Okay. Like, oh, yo, so you're MacArthur. Good. MacArthur. <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay. But so 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 legacy. So let's let's just look here. Um, so the, let, let, let me ask a question then. So I read the ESV. Actually, yeah, I read the ESV. What's the um what does the legacy bible say for this verse? Okay, the Legacy Standard Bible says in 1 Timothy 2, I do not allow a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man, but to remain quiet. Okay, oh wait, so the Legacy Bible gets it closer to, to, the, to the Greek than the uh, ESV. So that's great. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's unpack this, and then we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about this for a moment. Okay, so um, let's, let's finish this unpacking here. So uh, I do, so this is here a, so this is a plug for Greek that you need to learn it. Um, so the actor is Paul. The actions do not permit. The object is a woman. And then there's going to be three things that are related to the woman that are to happen. And these are, these are action infinitives, meaning to say that these are not limited to. So let's just talk here for a second. So we have to teach or to exercise rather to remain quiet. Okay, so these are actions and they are grammatically infinitives. These are, um, and so the significance of infinitives, let me just write this out here. And we, you also have infinitives in Tagalog, so you cannot make the excuse that, that it's a different language. The, uh, in, in Greek, infinitives have, they, they have, they convey action. They can convey action or states. And there is no reference to time. Now, there are exceptions to that, fair enough. But typically, this is across all languages. Infinitives are as they sound. There, there, there isn't a reference to, to actions or state. Now, in fairness, Greek has aorist tense and present tense infinitives. That's so beyond the scope of this class. And concerning aorist and the present is not dealing as much with time as as much as it is as it's dealing with the way the action is being conveyed. That's just so far beyond this class. So we can generally say, typically, that there is that there is no reference to time. There are exceptions for that, um, but for the most part, that's what an infinitive is. It's just a general action that that is what happens. Is everyone tracking there with what I'm 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 saying? And so the benefit for that for this discussion here is that this is not um, anyone who tries to say that this is just bound in context of the day. This is a wrong interpretation. Okay, is everyone tracking with me? Everyone's tracking with me. The one article, Kuya Bulba, you you shared with me a, a, an article where the the author was saying that the 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 command was bound to the specific context surrounding the churches of that day. Diba Bulba, do you want to make you want to add a comment to that? Kuya? That's why I, that 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 caught me attention because the author was saying that the Bible does not support the the ver the view. To the present, that women are not allowed to to teach or to exercise leadership in the church. That was how I summarized the article. Yeah, no, <laughs> exactly. And one of the arguments was in this passage, it's only yeah. contextual. And so when I yeah. saw your comments, yeah. and then I saw the passage, I'm like, okay, we we need to clarify this. We need to. Yeah. <laughs> you, you you could have your own interpretation. That's yeah. between you and God. You could say. 
we're moving on the trajectory of where the scriptures, okay, fine. We can agree or disagree. What you, what, you know, what you cannot say is what the text is limited to or what it's not limited to in certain regards. And here, this is outside the, the confines of, of time. I do not permit a woman to do what? To do the action of teaching or to exercise authority over a man. So let's finish, let's finish out here. So this is or to exercise. Now Glenn's getting excited here. He's like, oh man, this is supporting what, what I was saying earlier. So I <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. Hold, 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 hold the judgment till the end. And maybe it'll be confirmed. You know, I'm, I'm really trying to hide my, I'm really trying to hide my, my position. Let the, let the word of God speak. So we have this authority and it's specifically a position of authority. And then this is with reference to, this is reference or the exercising of authority is specifically pertaining to over a man. Okay. And, and so when, when we're thinking of a man, then this is general, this is general we could also think of a uh, man and woman relationship. And this brings up then the, the, uh, the marriage relationship. Is everyone tracking there with that? The, so, so marriage is going on in the background here. Exegetically, any comments or questions? Are you saying, are you not saying that the context is only applicable to the church or to the to the situation or circumstances in the church about leadership between a man or woman in the church? Yeah, so let's um no, that's a great question here. So let's let's write this out here. So then so then yeah, so from a contextual perspective, this is clearly within within the church. So let me just come back here. So this is in the con this is in the context of of the church. Now, what I would say is it's in the church and then can even move beyond the church. This would be an, an inference because the context is the church. So people will say that women can hold office in politically, in schools. And so we, we can have that discussion looking at from the created order, looking at from the biblical principles. But the primary context here, we should at least agree that it's in the context of the church. A any comments or questions, or is that making sense? Yeah, yeah, fully support that, uh, Tim. I think, I believe the sense of um, the statement is, if I may, I don't know if restricted would be a right word to say, but I do believe that this context is confined within the church. This is really yeah. speaking about yeah. Um, yeah. what yeah. the word of God says yeah. or what the word of God regulates in terms of yes. the leadership of the church. Yes. Inside yes. The church. Yeah. yeah. So thank you Tim, for yeah. pointing that out. No, no. And I think Koya Bullboy was, yeah. Koya Bullboy brought it up. No, but we could say black and white. This is in the church. Can we use this for principles outside the church? Yes. But if someone d determined to use different principles, again, it's not to say we agree with them, but we should be gracious in, uh, we could disagree, but still, but still have a very uh, um, good and loving relationship. Do you see what I'm saying? It's almost like we have to separate our relationship in interpretation between fundamental and non-fundamental issues. And we need to be able to agree to disagree and still be in relationship. Now, some relationships have to be broken because of sin. Okay. So that's where there's always that temptation to, we disagree. You are dead to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, it, it's hard for us to, Find find balance there, and and all of us all of us fall into that trap. Any other comments or questions here? Any other comments or questions? Um, Sir Tim. Yeah, go ahead. Sir Tim, just to clarify that um, this issue draws back to to the marriage, right? Mar yeah. So ma yeah. So so it, this goes back to marriage, and and we'll see creation. Yes. So if if in that case, how then God uses uh. Um, women leaders in Old Testament, when in ge generally God really used leaders, uh, women leaders as yeah as an instrument for His glory. Yeah. So was it limited, just limited in the church, or or what? 
Yeah. So, I mean, it depends on whether you accept the church being in the Old Testament. Um, <laughs> it's beyond the scope of the class, but I or the, the workshop. But I would I would say here you're bringing up a point concerning no men capable. So I'll just I you know I'll just have to share my cards here. Deborah was called by God to be a judge, and and in the day of Israel, the sin was so great there was not capable men. So that even Deborah and and Jael were were used by God to to save Israel because the men were so corrupt. So so God can raise up a woman leader. He can do whatever he wants, um, because um, but it's not his prescribed will it's because of the the sin of mankind if that makes sense uh what else does who else was a prophet in the old testament that we would not expect to be a prophet or or what else was a prophet that you would never have thought would would god would have used an animal a horse a donkey a donkey donkey yeah the donkey for a moment in time carried on the prophetic office Again, this is because of the sinfulness of mankind that God can use all means. He's working all things. Ephesians 1.11, God works all things according to the counsel of his will. And so uh, this is not prescriptive what God, um, his revealed word is for us, but it's because of the sin of mankind. His his will will not be thwarted. So uh, let's come back to that. But you do have, you do have, Um, I would say it speaks more to the condition of mankind compared to what, what God is prescribing. If that does, does does that make sense? Ask a follow-up question. Maybe you want to do some questions. questions So let's do bull boy first. And then um, who's the second? I can't, I can't see you. Who's the second one? Mark, Mark, Mark. Okay. When Paul, when Paul was uh, teaching this, uh, I do not permit a woman to teach. Although there was no reference, is it possible that Paul was referring to the case of Miriam when she questioned the authority of Moses and Miriam was immediately challenged by, you know, by the, by the, by the penalty of God for challenging yeah. Moses? Could be that that's, that's in agreement with this, with this um, type of argumentation. But I do think we have the mind of Paul in that where he goes to is, we're going to see here the four clause. So the relationship between here and here is one of idea explanation, or this is a basis. I actually prefer basis for, for then the, 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 the rule. Does that make sense? Koi boy. And so if what's in Paul, what's in Paul's mind creation, Diba. Does everyone see that? Let, let, let's table that. Let, let's come back to Koi Boy's comment. Mark, what was your comment or question? I'm um, sorry, Tim. Uh, you, said, you have said earlier that um, God can use um, women in some cases, like in China, he used, he used women to teach, right? And to, to oversee over, over men. So uh, my question is, yeah. if, Go God is so, so, if God is sovereign, why can't he use women also in in the church yeah so why, so, why is he limit, limited in in his sovereignty yeah so the the first thing i'd want to say is that you know i haven't i i was clear i haven't revealed my hands my opinion on the china situation i was just sharing with you what conservative fundamental men that would believe just like you know what that was their perspective on what to do in china so i just was sharing that that even very conservative men that are are King James, you know, they made the decision because of that particular instance. You know, let's come back to that because because I don't yes, want to. Yes, because I have some historian friends <laughs> who is yeah, also yeah. studying in this matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they said that it's an attack on God's sovereignty. <laughs> if 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 women leaders or women pastors are not allowed, so well. But that okay, so I, I, w- I was gonna I was gonna wait until the other d- the extra discussion. So this so Paul here is an so let's just let's just add a clarification here. Paul here is a, an apostle of Christ. Okay, Christ is Christ is God. There's one will in God, and so 
Paul is speaking the words of, of God here, word of God. So God can do whatever he wants, but if his ordained will is, I do not permit a woman to teach. So this, what I'm trying to say here is let's remove, remove Paul. If I were to say God or Christ, Christ does not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority, rather to remain quiet. How would you take that different? How would you take that differently? Is that is that an attack on God's sovereignty, or is that that is God's sovereignty? That is God's sovereign will. Yes, yes, that and is. It is, and and this is something that we need to think about here. And this is I'm going to be very strong here. Paul is an ambassador. Apostles were ambassadors. Okay, the ambassador never spoke of his own authority. Okay, the ambassador speaking on behalf. The new, the new, the new president is now um, Marcos, right? Fernand Marcos, diba? Bong Bong Marcos. So Bong Bong Marcos sends an ambassador to America. Does the ambassador say anything of his own desire when he speaks to President Joe Biden? Hell, a guy, he will not. The, the, the ambassador's authority, his own opinions mean they're nothing. He is speaking purely on behalf of the the president, President Bong Bong Marcos. Maybe it's because we don't really see, we see Paul as a man. Okay, fine. But this is why in one level, we would say Paul is writing. In another level, it doesn't matter. Paul means nothing. This is the words of Christ and what's prescriptive for his church. So I, I think this is just so malakas, you know? I, I, and again, I want to say prescriptively. Is everyone tracking there? Prescriptive, what we ought to do. Practice. A prescription is like what the doctor gives to you. This is what I'm prescribing for your medication. Prescriptive. Any 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 other comments or or or, or feedback? Yeah, I also had an ex a similar experience wherein I talked to one of our elders from my previous church. Wherein she told me that that that's the word of Paul. That's not the word of Christ. Yeah. That's not Christ. So it's like she's. She's dividing the word of God yeah. into yeah. Uh, it's Christ's words that matters, yep. not Paul's, because yep. Paul is not Christ. Yeah. No, that and and that is and and that so this gets to fundamentally, we need to understand the doctrine of the word of God. Plug for the class this fall. If we don't understand the doctrine of the word of God, this leads to contextual issues. This leads to practical issues. It's so it's so fundamental. Excellent comment, Julian.